we are uh, playing some Civilization VI. Uh, Gathering Storm. <clears throat> I have this game here. I have started playing it a while ago. I think this was, uh, must have been last week or so. Oh, yeah, 12.15. You can see this is my last save there. And, uh, yeah, it was a pretty, pretty good game so far. It's going well. I had an early war that went well. Um, I'm not winning, necessarily. It's a big map. You can see we're playing on Immortal. Um, and there is the standard extended. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, there are some mods here that I'm playing with. Nothing too game-breaking, but notably extended eras. Uh, and Take Your Time Ultimate, which will slow down the pacing of the game a little bit. So it's going to be a little bit slower than a standard game. About 20 to 30% slower. Not quite to marathon level, um, but not quite as fast as standard. Um, so, or, uh, yeah, or rather, I should say, not quite to epic level, but... Not not as fast as standard. Somewhere in between. And uh, there's a couple other things like um, Embarkation Plus Plus, which actually worked against me this time. You can see I stayed all on my island. Um, and there were a couple others. Oceans and uh, better coastal cities and water tiles. And you can see, again, I'm settling inland, so it's not as though I'm planning to abuse that in any great sense. Um, but I do play with those most of the time. If you don't play with those, I would recommend them. They're actually really great mods. They make other sieves more powerful too, so it's more of a gameplay change than it is like a buff to the player. It just gives you another tool that you can use better than the computers do, and I like mods like that. It's like that. <clears throat> yeah, so let's, uh, let's load it up. Let's load it up and see what we got going on. Um, <clears throat> It's been a little while. Like I said, this was last week that I was playing it last. And I only got about 135 turns into the game. So it's enough to really get a feel for what's going on. But, you know, not quite to the mid-game yet. I believe we're not even in the third era. But we may be wrong about that. We'll see here once the loading screen picks up. <clears throat> yeah, it uh, should go well, I think. I think it's going to go well. Uh, I'm playing Nader Shaw. I think that's the right way to pronounce it, again, if, if, if I'm wrong. Oh yeah, here we go. Alright, so this is Persia. This is, if you're not familiar, the newest leader for Persia added to the game with the recent update. <clears throat> and uh, he has a number of unique things going on, notably that absolutely huge plus five combat strength when attacking full health units, especially on difficulties like Immortal and Deity. It cannot be understated how huge plus five is. That is wild. That basically mitigates the bonus that your opponent gets, and then some, just for playing on a higher difficulty. So things get much easier um, when it comes to initiating fights. Um, domestic trade routes are really good. <clears throat> um, and notably, the uh, roads are really good as well. So this is kind of understated, but your roads being good really helps to shuffle around builders. It helps to shuffle around military units. Um, overall, War is easier, infrastructure is easier, great, great, great civilization. I've really been enjoying playing him. Um, this time, I basically just bum-rushed Immortals. Uh, I did nothing except for get iron working, and I saw I had iron literally right next to my capital. You'll see when we load in here. Um, right next to my capital, I had iron, and I just had to go for it. It's my capital city. There's that iron there that got us so many immortals, and you can see we're already pretty well in control of the game. Um, I think it is, was it control T? One of these will hide the text. Um, <clears throat> so I've gone vampires, you can see we're playing cults as well. Vampires are what I went with because I had this early war here, where I captured all of this stuff here from, uh, I believe it was Norway, conquered the crap out of Norway, and as well, a, a couple of city-states here. Now, this is going to come back and bite me in the ass, I think, when the World Congress happens, which it has not yet. 
Let's see, we're still three turns until the end of the Classical Era. Um, so the World Congress will happen soon, and I have no diplomatic favor, so I'm anticipating that I will be attacked, um, which is why I've gone ahead and started conquering Akkad. I plan to go ahead and conquer uh, uh, Nana Revo, because I'm not really going for great people, and I don't want someone else getting that bonus. Um, Cardiff has uh, a really, really good bonus here, which is that your coastal cities for harbors, um, they get automatic power, which is really nice, but that's kind of late game. Again, I don't really care about it all that much. I'd rather just have a city. Um, so I'm probably going to take it over. Um, Aunt Revo, Aunt, Aunt Na, Aunta Nana Revo, Aunt Nana Revo, uh, has, it's maybe worth keeping, but I, again, I'm not really, I don't really have districts. I'm currently just now laying down my first, whoops, just now laying down my first real infrastructure here as far as districts are concerned. So um, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So I am currently trying to conquer a cod here. Uh, we can see that it's not quite surrounded yet. Um, well, now it is. And I'm going to just pillage this. I want to get this immortal healed up. <clears throat> and you can see they are woefully underpowered for what we are doing here. We can pretty much just walk up and take this. It is basically ours for free. So that is just the raw power of these immortals in these early game stages. Even at the point where the classical era is about to end, I'm able to just walk up and conquer city-states. So really, really crazy powerful stuff. Really fun to use. And uh, it's very rushable. You know, if you look at this uh, tech tree here, you can pretty much ignore all this stuff up here and just go straight to ironworking, and there's your immortal boom right in the classical era. If you get some science tiles near you, you can even get that before the classical era. Totally crazy. Um, but I think I got mine right as the classical era was starting, and I was able to upgrade a couple warriors in, buy one more, and that was just game over for Norway. They had spent the whole game building warriors, and I spent the whole game prepping to build three immortals. That was the deal. So I'm going to go ahead and migrate these down. I think they need to go southwards. Uh, that way we can get, go ahead and conquer these other two city-states as quickly as possible. Again, I know everybody's going to be pissed at me anyway, so I don't really care. I'm just going to try to take stuff over. <clears throat> so here we have an absolutely insane holy site that's going up. I'm going to drop down this uh, this unique improvement as well. I probably could have saved that for the next era, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, you know, we are squarely into Golden Age territory now as well. <clears throat> yeah, you know, probably in hindsight, if uh, don't do that, you know, if an era is about to end in three turns, save your unique improvement if you're already getting a Golden Age. That's a lot of golden, a lot of era score, honestly. Yeah. It's kind of a shame that I do not get to use that. So here, um, I'm just going to switch off that. Here we are looking at uh, the, I believe this is CQUI, the community quick user interface change for um, our cities. I love this mod. If you're not already using Sucretax, simple UI improvements to upgrade these these and uh, CQUI, you absolutely should pick those up. They're fantastic, fantastic mods. Uh, <coughs> and we are trying to decide what to put here. Now, I really want to get this industrial zone going. I want to get some industrial zones going overall because, again, I'm just trying to go warmonger really in a big way. Um, but I need to chop out to get this aqueduct in here. So I'm thinking maybe I chop out... I wouldn't want to chop out a galley. Which is this? 140. What am I getting for chopping here? 59. So, I have to say exactly what to put where. Um, put a preserve down anywhere. Wow, there's actually some really good preserve spots. I never would have guessed, but. I think actually what I need to do here is 
probably plop a preserve in. Right, right, right. Forgot that this got changed by oceans. This is now a science build. Unimproved coast tiles with features. Unimproved land, breathtaking tiles. Basic coast tile. Okay. It seems like these breathtaking. <coughs> That would be breathtaking. That would be breathtaking. So we could actually get a lot of science here by plopping this preserve down. That would make all, uh, this breathtaking and this breathtaking, giving us one, two, three, four science. So that's what we're going to chop out here. Uh, and that will then make room for aqueduct. That give us the housing that we need get up to that industrial zone. Oh. Um, <clears throat> you can see also, if you haven't noticed, these tax with the numbers beneath them. This is a mod that improves your tax. Uh, this is really, really great. Another thing that is basically essential for higher difficulties, if you've never played up on those higher difficulties before. It really enables your long-term planning I don't know how people would ever play higher difficulties without it. In all honesty, it is that useful. Let's see, so there's looks like there's not much left to do this turn. I'm just going to continue building the construction projects we have in town. You can see I've got some big plans over here for some dams and production. These rivers actually split. And you can see here... Um, it's difficult to tell exactly where the dams go. This is a common struggle. Um, but if you hover, you'll notice that there is a little star. Oh, well, he's mad. Um, oops. But you'll notice that there is a little star by um, one of the rivers. This is where it says Karun River. Uh, that means that for that tile, that river is the dominant river there. So if there is a dam on that river already, you won't be able to build a, a river or a, a dam there. So uh, what you can do, you can often, when you have these fjords like this, you can cram in multiple dams all together. You just need to hover over, and you can see this one um, is the dam for, well, if I can get a tooltip, uh, this one is the dam for the Karun River. And then over here, this one is the dam for the Otra River. And together, we can get some really crazy bonuses on these industrial zones right out of the gate. <coughs> Uh, speaking of industrial zones, I'd like to ship. Well, maybe it's a little early for that, actually. Uh, I'd go towards machinery instead. <clears throat> I have no reason to build Petra. Um, and dams are nice, but again, I'm not really hurting for housing. But I expect that I am going to get attacked. So the question is, do I want to build districts, or do I want to build crossbow? And these crossbowmen, I believe they are strictly an upgrade to my immortal in the ranged sense. Uh, so this would be by far my most powerful ranged unit. Apparently I could reveal these Niter and see if I have any of that near me. And that could be a really good option. But I'm a little tempted to uh, not do that because I haven't placed down some really crucial districts. And I don't want Niter to appear underneath of where I want to place a district. That would be very unfortunate. So I think what I'm going to do is actually work towards apprenticeship here and then pick up machinery. Um, you know, never mind. Let's do education. I'll do apprenticeship towards education after that. That way I can patch up my weak point with science. Because you can see I am actually way behind on science. Not only do I expect to get attacked, I kind of need to get attacked so that I can win. Um, because things are not going well on the science front. I do have a lot of cities. So you can see I have more cities than my opponents, which is probably a good thing in the long run. 
but it's usually a bad idea to just try to do a straight up macro game against these, these high level AIs. You can almost always beat them out in some other way. <clears throat> I'm going to try to trade with him before he's too mad at me. Um, after the council, let's see, we get a couple luxuries here. I do have a friend, which is really nice. <clears throat> and he's friends with Canada, so that's a potential path to a second friendship, which is good. But most people in the world do not like me, and my friend here, he is broke. He has no money, but he's not a very helpful friend at this time. It's quite unfortunate. So, I'm trying to sell off some of these resources. That is a ton of money, so we are going to take that deal and run. That's fantastic. Looks like tons of luxuries over here, too. I wish he wasn't so angry with me. I want to buy these. Okay, yes, he can. He will let me buy them. This is, this is wildly overpaying, but it's also going to make him a lot less angry with me which is really desirable. I, I, again, I don't want people to be pissed at me at this point. I'm way behind in science, I'm way behind in culture, and I can slingshot ahead if they just don't kill me. <clears throat> so that's the struggle with these early game wars, is you kind of have to do one, but you also have to do infrastructure or you will fall behind. Now this is very interesting, that these two towns are rebelling. Um, I think that that's good. I hope that they go to war over this. This would be very nice is if they two, if these two decided to fight. Um, because then I could swoop in here and, and take him over. He has a pretty good amount of science. He's not so far ahead of me. But Canada is just scary. Canada is the problem this game, I think. Um, although I haven't seen the other continents. And yes, there are other continents. This map is very big. Um, I anticipate Canada is going to be the big dog that I am going to have to fight against for the rest of the game. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. I've definitely got a powerful army, and I want to keep using it. Uh, I don't want to let these units sit idle, but I also want to spend as much time at peace with other civilizations as I can. So, so these city-states are perfect. Really, really good time to just... Take all of these. No. Let's see where we can get a campus in here. Plus four. That is huge. We'll take that. No doubt. Um, well, let's actually, let's shop that. Let's shop that. That is, that'll really help with the production of things here. So I'll go ahead and just drop a tack on. Remind myself. Put that campus there. <clears throat> if you're anything like me, probably you forget stuff occasionally. We humans, we can't remember everything. So putting tax down when you think to do something you can't do right now, that is just generally a great call. It's going to save you a lot of headache in the future. We'll go ahead and walk up to this river. I could upgrade, but I would rather try to get him closer to position. Let's see. Got a pole here is not going anywhere. I'm actually going to station these guys up here. Um, upgrades here. It's really strong. Um, so, yeah, I think I need to have some dudes up here just to prevent getting attacked while I get these walls built in the cities, because they desperately need walls. Also, go ahead and just kind of ruin Canada's day over here. These hills, those are really important. These are actually amazing tiles that I'm buying right now. Like, it's expensive, but those tiles are incredible. So, we want those. We don't want Canada those and you can see one two three one two three canada was going to get both of those so not good we now have them they are ours that is honestly one of my favorite places to put gold in general is towards buying tiles um it's a lot of times people talk about 
it as uh, production that you can move. And I think that is a fantastic way to think about it. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, but it is also, you know, absolutely territory that you can deny your opponents. You can force their cities, you know, forever to be short a few tiles. Toronto now will never get bigger than Kumasi and Midla, which means potentially I can flip this city in the future. Uh, so just the cost of purchasing these tiles alone means that this city will have loyalty problems. And that is a really understatedly powerful way to use your gold when it comes to the early game part of Civ. The city side by side that you get can really, really ruin your opponents. If they're too close together. <clears throat> Likewise, you want to make sure to watch out for that. That's very common for them to... Um, that's nice. Uh, it's very common for them to try to actually buy these tiles, especially on higher difficulties. They will buy those tiles. If they, are, if they have good yields, they probably wouldn't have bought these, but they would have eventually gotten them. Fairly quickly at that, because you can notice there is there was nowhere else except to into these tiles for Toronto to grow. <clears throat> so now Toronto is stuck; it cannot get bigger, which is just so good. All this territory goes to us. Also, if they want to get over here, they have to go through our borders. Um, well, actually, no, there is a gap here, so but this will eventually fill in. in this guy over here. Let's get some wine. <clears throat> Another wine. Anybody who wants to buy this? No. Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna garrison some dudes. Uh, I really <laughs> I have a strong feeling we're gonna get a declaration of war as soon as the next era starts. <clears throat> which is great. We're going to get defensive tactics for, for much faster uh, than previously expected. So if we do, we might lose these cities. That's okay. Not the end of the world. We can take the cities back. Um, Canada hasn't denounced me, and Canada is really the one I'm afraid of. You can see they're still on catapults, so even though they have over double my science, they just haven't had it for long enough uh, to really get that far ahead. We can see here... Like, I'm back here, Canada's up here in the medieval era. So we're, we're in the same region, he's just got some of these texts, whereas I'm on these texts. <clears throat> so he's, he's a good bit ahead of me, but not so much that it is totally, totally devastating. But I do need to really start focusing on either science or culture generation, honestly, probably both, in terms of my infrastructure. So I really got to make these um, melee units work this game. Gotta put them to work. <clears throat> so, get preserves. I feel like more campuses, more universities, probably good. I'm getting the Terracotta Army as well, which is going to make a huge difference in terms of my overall power. Um, I think that's going to help. Let's see, we're going to send this guy. Terracotta Army, if you're not familiar, gives every single unit um, an upgrade level, which is just awesome. Very, very powerful. It used to do something even more insane, which was it would give you a copy of every single ground military unit you had. Yeah, that was what it did. Um, but it doesn't do that anymore, but... Uh, it is still very good. It's definitely worth building if you can snag it. I have so much production here. It's actually not too unlikely that I would get it. Uh, that said, it might be worth doing a chop or two. We are pretty close. I don't want to lose it. Where do I want to put that? So I could do a uh, something like this with a little culture generator. Good idea. To that effect. Yeah. 
That seems good. So I want to chop these then. Let's go ahead and chop these two spots, and we'll put that towards the Terracotta Army, and that'll clear up some future development space for that uh, culture generation spot. That'd be really good. You know, it's uh, that's one of the things I love about Civ, is it's just the, you know, winning a Civ game is the culmination of all of these teeny tiny little decisions like that. There's so many different uh, little small things, ways to express your skill, ways to, you know, play the, the game that you want to play, the way that you want to play it. You know, and every new edition of Civ, I think, gives you more and more options to do that. If you want to have your religion take over the world, you can. You know, you want to, like, be the richest person and just buy everything, like, sure, you, you've got a few ways you can win doing that. Um, and it's, a, it's a very interesting concept. <clears throat> so... We've got a bunch of stuff going on here. People want to sell me iron. Somebody wants to buy my... Okay, yeah, sure. I'll take an amount of money for that. That's good, but yeah. Last time, nobody wanted to buy it, so... Uh, let's see. People want to sell me iron. I have iron. I'm misunderstanding. Do people want to buy my iron? It's a golden age. Look how bright it is outside. <clears throat> All right. Wow. It's just me and Coupe. Um, Canada is in a dark age. Oh, we might be able to do some loyalty shenanigans with Canada. This could be potentially huge. Um, so monumentality is the way to go. Like as far as. Oh, this is concerned. Like, this is technically correct to do monumentality. I was trying to think if commercial hub and harbors district gold adjacency bonus for science one culture for each specialty. So that's really strong, but I don't actually have many districts. I have. I could get a free great profit eventually. I think I'm going to go monumental. Monumentality seems like the best choice here. Because we've got a little bit of faith, we can use this to pump out some builders. I actually do have a need for builders at this point. Um, where is the game? So let's start popping out builders here. We're going to faith purchase these. And you can see they're coming out with a lot of charges. In fact, I just, I perhaps wasted a charge there. Do I have the one that, uh... No, okay. So there is also a card that will give builders two charges later. Ooh. It's good. It's good. Let's see, so we've got loyalty for garrison units, loyalty for governors. I put those in there because I was going to a war. Um, I don't have anything else loyalty affecting. I'm not seeing it. Could go for campus district adjacency, but this plus one production is kind of major. I think the campus adjacency is needed more than the production. I mean, that is, yeah, that's a huge amount of science for us. That makes such a big difference. We're only going to get more and more campuses too, so there's, our science production is going to go up even more. Go ahead and buy... Some more tiles to upgrade here for this city. That one seems good. Dude likes me. Okay, see, and that's why, that's why you overpay for something, and suddenly they don't hate you. Let's see then. Let's see, let's see. So we're just gonna keep moving south. Try to come around to the side of Antananarivo and uh, take it that way. Although I'm gonna move this catapult um, to this spot over here. Oh, 
all of these military units. Oh, I probably should have moved there. It's fine. We've got roads. Our roads are amazing, so actually, if you make that kind of a blunder, it doesn't matter as much. I still want open borders here. Just let that scout run around figuring stuff out. Oh, scout. Yep, army's rotating down and to the left. You can see that happening over here. Got a few units scattered around, a couple defenders up here that are pretty strong. Be okay. Happen to get attacked. I'm noticing that this is now the first great congress. <clears throat> or world congress, so hmm. Um I wonder what will happen. You know, are they going to like there's some people with enough diplo favor. <clears throat> to immediately vote for me to be doomed for conquering city-states. So, let's see what happens. Someone else has been conquering city-states, too. Interesting. Hmm. I've got a lot of wine. <laughs> wine country. Um. Denny. Let's see. Is anybody going to raise an emergency? Dang it. I wonder what the emergency could possibly be. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's the other person conquering city-states? There are two of us. Or maybe no one will care? <laughs> If I don't sound confident, it's because I'm not. <clears throat> okay, so actually, you know, before we go any further, go ahead and um, the chops towards that. Make sure that I've got all my districts down. All right. Also love that the text auto deletes. You can see it's still there, but once we do this, it's gone. So nice. Those walls are coming up faster too. Let's see. And I just really, I think I'm about to get a war deck. I'm gonna just wait. skip through all this. Hmm. city is awesome. 
please don't be about me. <laughs> Get Machu Picchu. Someone wants to buy one there. Hopefully, I mean, I chopped for the Terracotta Army pretty heavy. So. Hopefully I get it. I've got all this production, and I chop for it. Like, I would be sad if I did not get it. Uh, this is probably about me. Oh, it's about me. <laughs> wait, wait, what is Christensen? I don't even... Oh, man. Manishan. Yes, but I don't I don't want to go to war with Basil, so I'm gonna vote no. I guess they're mad because I conquered um Oh, I wonder if this was like originally a Canadian city. Hmm. Shucks. Well, hopefully people vote no. Or this game is about to get a little interesting. get defensive tactics right away. Oh, not good. Well, let's see. So who am I at war with? Eight people. Oh, man. Come on. Oh, no, no. Okay. Just eight. eight. It's two people. Coupe and... and... Well, so I did kind of want to fight Canada. This is really bad because I've kind of I got my whole military over here, which is shitty. Um, I've got to run them all back, and I did see this coming. I even commented on this, so I really misplayed here. I should not have uh, shouldn't have migrated my army down here. Got greedy, wanting this city state, but I am clearly going to have to just let this city state exist. I don't get to take it. That's fine. That's fine. As I, I can't afford to be losing up here on the front. That's just not a valid option. We've got this done. I really want to get feudalism in. I have to get, I have to slot in the minions. I've got the money to just take that out so I can keep my loyalty bonus. I think the loyalty bonus matters more. I'm pressuring Victoria now. That's actually a huge deal. So I need to think. Bear with me. I don't know. I'm gonna have a good thing here. It's got man at arms. Now, what is the power level of these man at arms? 45. So they're strong. Like, I don't have that. I get that next turn. The problem is, I don't really have. Um, we sell off these extra luxuries. Um, so the king's willing to give me a lot of money, actually. <clears throat> I'm 
6750. Sure, we'll take that. So <clears throat> that's great. Now I can get some man at arms, and that's going to be really, really important because that will upgrade my defensive capability. So I'm going to lose this ranged attack, um, but it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter because we're, our walls are going to get so much stronger. And Terracrot Army hits next turn. So this is another reason I think that we might be able to win is I'm going to have some Blitz um, Men-at-Arms out there. A lot more potential power. So this is a, an example of why high power military units can be good um, when you use them early on in the game. But what do I do? What do I really want to do here? I have myself a little bit of some Delta 8 here. Well, I think is to do a little smack. This is a, this is a real thinking moment. This is not one of those turns. So I guess my main thought is how hard should I shift into military production? He's got a big military. And it's advanced. <clears throat> I think I should go to castles after apprenticeship to try to get those walls up. And just try to build walls everywhere. As soon as I can. I need to start building those upgraded walls. Because I, I have a feeling I'm going to lose Mitla and or Kumasi. It's highly possible. But this is not really the end of the world. What I need to make happen is I need to bleed Canada out. I need to make them suffer for taking one of my cities. <laughs> Every inch that they get I need to make them bleed for. And right now, they can pretty much just walk into my territory. So things are a little subpar. A little subpar at this moment. Hmm. I really should have kept all my units up north. You know, you know, this is the time where I make a plan for the rest of the game. I think I need to stop and think through not just how am I going to handle this. Because honestly, I've got the military. I've got the money now. I've got some income. I should be able to. And they're broke, right? They've got this huge military, but they can't field it. Um... So I, on the other hand, have a big military and a bunch of money. So sure, they can they can fight me, but their units are like not properly funded, which decreases their power. Um, so ideally, they won't get too much done. The text that they have on me. I have more texts than them, which is hilarious. But obviously, the texts they've been worship they've been researching are um, more advanced. Looks like they went to universities or something. I don't know. Greece is kicking ass. Greece has researched a lot of texts. Corpus Coupe. And it is also at 91 cultured, so. 
So I know I've established that Canada is the threat. I want to, in theory, win this war. But by how much, I'm not sure. Because if I go to warmongery, I might wind up in more wars, which I guess could be a good thing. But I really need to build some like campuses and some campus buildings <laughs> before I get into too much fighting. I wanted to put campuses here just so I could put libraries in them. Still, so this is a different river. So I think I could put a dam here. So, doing a little long term planning here. I'm going to piece together what goes where. Keep these two rainforests. Let me put a campus here. Just give it that plus one. And then what I can do put commercial up here. That bumps it up to plus two. And then I've got these two extra spaces over here as well. So these lumber mills are for that, but this rainforest isn't important. I'll put two more districts here. And anytime I see this diamond shape. Um, what comes to mind immediately is to do ultra zoom. Like this diagonal diamond shape. Something like this. You can see that bumps us up to two plus sixes. We've got a wonder over here as well. Um, so that gets a plus eight here. This is crazy culture generation. And we get a plus three campus out of nowhere. I think. This is probably going to be the best setup for this area. I've got an aqueduct over here, so I essentially have shoehorned myself into putting an industrial zone thing. That's really the only spot that is reasonable. And notably, nowhere around this has around this has any kind of forest except for this tile. Is this another river? Oh, I see. This is the Otra. This is the So yeah, if I dam this, then this will be the only tile that will flood. Uh, or rather, these two tiles will flood. So this tile is safe, and this tile will be safe, and this tile will be safe. And I'll get these two industrial zones. But this could be a CODS commercial hub. Stinson already has a commercial hub. And an industrial zone planned for that. Plus six industrial zone. No. Yeah. 
There's a spot for a city right here. Look at that. Yeah, it'll get flooded occasionally, but it doesn't really matter um, because it'll have amazing bonuses. Be really good city. So this works out because now this here. Another one of those. Um, we've got a city and a dam here. Um, actually, you know what we could do? If I did an aqueduct here, this really on there. It's also a plus five. Okay, well, that's not that good. This. So I'll probably want to set up another culture diamond up here then. So this is a, wow, this is a nearly a form hexagon. <laughs> I guess a form bow. Um, The farm triangle there. That's nice. The farm triangle here too. I put a dam. Model. This is the Rotra. So I think this is the first dammable tile on the Nidal River. Is this um Two dams side by side. Damn. As it were. So I think ideally, I mean if I get to keep these cities, I think this would be good. These quarries will bump up our, our zones here. Like so. And then I could put wow, it's such a good tile to squash though. It's like it's painful to squash a seven food tile. I guess it is in part because of the three, but that's four. Just one industrial zone. You really, really need one. But I can't get rid of the marble. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm a little hungry. I am going to go get a snack while I think about this. Let's see. Hmm. So there's a few things I want to plan out here. I need to plan my city development. That's a big thing. But I also need to consider what my tech choices will be for the rest of the game. And I need to consider what my civic choices will be for the rest of the game. I really need to decide how I'm going to proceed. This is something in lower difficulty games. It's not as important that you have a focused game plan. Um, but my focused game plan was to get immortals and kill Norway. Um, now, I have done that, but the game is obviously not over. So I need to have a new plan. Something that is a goal to work towards. Um, and I don't really know what that is. I don't know what the optimal path forward would be for me at this point. Now... Um, given the land I have, I have a lot of open space, and this lends itself really nicely to a few styles. Um, science is not really one of them, <clears throat> although perhaps I can get up some preserves. If I can get a lot of really good preserves, and I haven't looked yet, but if I can get some good preserves going here, then 
in that case, I'll have enough science production to really keep up. But otherwise, I think I'm going to have to go down either a culture route or a military production focus route. Um, so I need to either uh, add on encampments and industrial zones, campuses and preserves, or entertainment complexes and theater squares. Um, and you can see I've found some really good positions for all of these. And in, in the end game, I will have all of these things. But what you do first really matters. And at this point in the game, most, most people already have this, but they also haven't been building Immortals for 700 years. So uh, their game plan is a little different in, term, in that way. Um, so how do we translate this big lead that we have where i have as many cities as any of the other civs um at this very very early stage in the game i have more cities in fact that is really good you are not usually ahead in higher difficulties if you're ahead at all you're probably winning um is the rule of thumb but I'm only ahead in just that one way. I'm only ahead in terms of my city count. I'm not ahead in any of the numbers. Um, well, maybe money. Might be ahead in terms of money. No, Portugal is making a lot more money than I am. I'm doing okay. No, I'm doing all right on money. I guess that's good. So that's a strength I have. That's worth noting. Um, it's always good to pay attention to the strengths that you do note about your empire. Perhaps that's something we could lean into a bit <clears throat> with some of this planning considering for example what are we going to do with all of this money that we're getting do we buy units uh do we buy granaries you know what is what's the need and how do we fulfill it and that is that is the tricky question that is that is the question really that these 4x games ask you every turn every little action that's what you're really trying to figure out. Um, so I think, though, as a method for deciding this very, very tricky thing, and I'm realizing how this is, I can't build that. Um, as a method for deciding this very tricky thing, um, I really like to use the district placement tools. Um, like, or not the district placement tools, the tack placement tools, like what we have on screen here. See, I've covered my screen in the past, basically. Uh, so those really, really help me with this planning and decision making. You know, I can look around and see generally, um, you know, what do I have the most of? Um, you know, what do I have the least of? And make a decision based off of my needs at the moment. You know, if I have, generally speaking, no good campus locations, it might be worth it to just cram out a campus everywhere. Just make a campus in every city. Since I don't have one really good one, I'll just make a bunch of really crappy ones. Sometimes this is necessary. Um, you know, or for example, maybe I just make no more campuses and lean completely into culture um, and you know, throw science to the wind. That could be an option too, um, depending on the land available to me and how it all fits together. So, <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm going to need to do quite a lot of plotting. I'm also going to need to do a little bit of paper geography. This is sandwich is sauce. So, I guess I, that's my thoughts. You probably don't want to hear me eating. So um, I am just going to mute myself and maybe move the camera around a little bit, do some thinking about what to do next.
There we go. That's the right button. Nice. Computers. Science. Hello. I have returned. Mm. Well, that was a delicious pair of sandwiches. <clears throat> Quite yummy indeed. Now you can see I've switched over here to strategic view. This is really helpful for seeing how impenetrable the Canadian territory is. Um, every tile is a hill. Um, what the hill? Uh, <laughs> ah, 
Like, even if we go this way, it's like forests and then hills. Um, it's going to be pretty hard to get up in there. We would need to conquer Victoria, Vancouver, Toronto, and Halifax to have even a chance of conquering Ottawa and holding it. I think if we got these three, if we got these three cities, and we maybe raised these two, or maybe if we if we could capture th these four at once, then we would probably have enough loyalty to hold Ottawa. Alternately, we could just knock it twice. <clears throat> now, this may sound ambitious. This may sound ambitious, but you see, I have a plan, um, which is. Uh, to hurl my units at their cities uh, mercilessly until their cities become mine. Uh, I noticed that while this city is a 56, and this city is a 49, this city is a 37, and this city is a 35. So in fact, their base walls are the same power mine are, or are close to the same power mine are. <laughs> oh, wait, never mind. No, my base walls are 25. Well, that's fine. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a man at arms next turn. But my walls are about to jump up in power. So pretty much, presumably, as long as I don't lose a city this turn, um, I think I should be able to defend pretty strongly. So, <clears throat> but invading is gonna be really tough. I'm gonna need to kill their army, basically, before I can invade. Holy crap, he has no walls. I just realized there's no walls here. Like, I could have probably conquered... There's no walls. Like, they're not even building walls. I guess they could probably build walls pretty quickly at this point, but... Like, these cities back here can't. Like, I could burn these down. Um, very easily. You know, and these two... Honestly, maybe this is not so bad. I might be able to just burn Canada to the ground. That might be the way to do it. <clears throat> I could try to conquer them, depending on loyalty. I am in a golden age. Um, so loyalty is going to be in my favor. Uh, them being in a dark age and being in a golden age. Could work. Could work. But I'm not done planning. I still don't really know what I want to do with the future. There's some city spots I haven't planned out. There's some districts I don't know what I want to do with. So I've still got some planning to do. So let's look at this, first off, the settler lens. This is a big thing you want to check on to see if there's any good spots that you've missed. Now, this is all desert, uh, and I don't really feel like building Petra. So I'm going to ignore this spot. I don't like that spot. Um, however, noticeably, up here is an amazing location to build a city. This is really good. So we could definitely slap something down like right there, maybe right there, uh, too. Could be really good. Something like that, and that. A couple settlers, a couple settlers. So then, <coughs> question is, what would we want to build here? So I could anticipate that um, we would want to build a harbor. The best place for a harbor here would be either there or there, probably here, because then we can put a commercial hub next to it. And that will give it a little bonus. Um, now we don't have any reefs nearby, which is kind of sad, so we can't get anything better than... I mean, we could put it by a volcano. I don't think we want to put it beside a volcano. <laughs> <clears throat> Could put it beside a volcano. That would give it plus two. I think this is going to be our best um, science spot. Let's check the appeal lens over here. Wow. This area is gorgeous, apparently. So we could definitely slap in a preserve in some of these places, too. This is another thing to think about. Is what do I do... So this is all, like, pretty unappealing land here, actually, it turns out. Um, I 
don't have that much land that is actually nice until we get down to here where I was building that preserve. Um, but if we built a preserve on light green, it becomes dark green, and that's really what we want. Um, so we're looking for a spot that is like surrounded by light green. This could be a good spot for a preserve, although we've got a campus here. And this is developed as well, so that's maybe not so good. It's looking like I don't have too many good spots for preserves. I guess up here, it's a pretty amazing preserve. I could try to preserve this spot. something more like this. But then I can't do this. I really want to do that. Wait, what? Plus two science from each adjacent preserve. So that's kind of incredible. But I can't put a preserve there. Uh, okay, so where are my others? Uh, yeah, so I could put one here. That's a really good spot for a preserve, and that bumps up my science here, which is huge. Um, also, I could have put the preserve there. <laughs> Pain. But this is good to know because now, now we have some really good things. Um, <clears throat> hmm. Preserve. I can't just put it willy-nilly. There must be some... <clears throat> more than nil to the well. Some pretty dope commercial hub spots, actually. A lot of rivers making my commercial hubs like, really go boom. That's potentially a good option. But honestly, I mean, I'm willing to build these two next to each other for <laughs> plus two. Like, I'm gonna start building those. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I definitely wanna put. Preserve here, that seems like a no brainer. No brainer. Get that plus six. That's wild. Um, and then what about the tiles up here? But these tiles are amazing too, so I can really put this anywhere. I could put it like there. Sure. 
And then we get to keep this production tile. That's great. Because uh, it's a really good tile. <coughs> we can, in theory, place either a wonder or maybe a water park here. Do a water park. Maybe even the Panama Canal. <laughs> if we don't if we didn't do the campus, but I don't think that would make much sense. Um, if we put a water park there, we would probably want a theater square here. Though, actually, no, we'd want a theater square here. So that's a pretty dope little city. It's very heavily districted. Um, it looks like we're not going to want to improve these tiles either. Does this count as coast? It counts as lake. Okay, so yeah, so because the preserve doesn't affect lake, it's fine to toss this here. Um, not going to weaken the preserve at all. Very cool. So I like that the preserve here, this is a mod um, that's adding that in. <coughs> I like that that combos so nicely. It's very interesting. Potentially do another one. I could do something like. Let's see. So these would all have their appeal by one. So this will generate a bunch of science from these lands nearby. <clears throat> and then I can put... Uh, this is this is probably the best spot for it. Yeah. So this would just be plus three. So the thing is, we want to get this campus down before this city goes in, so that Kumasi actually gets it. But I don't want to build a tile yet. I don't want to go ahead and buy a tile because um, I don't know if I'm going to get to keep Kumasi. Um, so I'm going to hold off on that. But normally I would be slapping the campus down there in a heartbeat. I think now... Maybe I should be slapping down it. I can't. Um, and saying, forget the holy site. That's not important. What we need is a place to train warriors <clears throat> and a chew toy for them to pillage. Um, I should go through these buildings. I don't really know what I want to do yet. So these two cities I think need to go in. This will be major science powerhouse for me. And that means I need to hold Kamasi. Kamasi is actually really important to me. Which is kind of scary. Because um, I don't have much there. But the walls are almost done. And there's a lot of hills, so I think it's okay for now. like some fodder. Seems 
those tiles, <clears throat> these tiles are off limits then. Uh, I can't put an industrial zone. I can't put a, an encampment there. So I would want to put an encampment, I guess, here. so much infrastructure. So where... Um, wait. Hmm. So I'm thinking, actually, <coughs> that going in a science direction seems feasible, then. With these preserves, um, I can probably take a more balanced approach to this game and get that science really kicking. I think that's probably what Canada did, um, now that I think about it, because <coughs> they have some pretty nice land over there. But, but my land isn't quite as pretty, so it's not very easy to find really good spots to do. Uh, this mountain range is really pretty. Let's see what we do that. Um, I'd have to settle down here by Cardiff, I guess. <coughs> But I could, if I wanted to do a desert city, I could turn that desert city into, into a bunch of science. Sparta is another thing down here. I really wanted to conquer, conquer Cardiff. I worry about the long-term prosperity of Sparta without um, being connected to the empire. You know, this, is, this is something I don't want to continue existing. Very unfortunate it's in my way. So I think I really want to conquer Cardiff. Um, in fact, I kind of want to burn it down um, and put a new city like here. Uh, but it is really nicely positioned for defensive purposes. So it might be worth keeping. It is going to be pretty big. Tough to say. Tough to say. But I want to conquer it <clears throat> at the very least. I want it out of the way so that I can put more stuff down there. Um, and always have like a, a nice, easy route through here. Like, it's so hard to get down here, but that's not so bad. So, lots of them done. We've got some really good district positions. Really good district positions. So I think at this point, <clears throat> I need to actually get culture, because um, I don't have really any. And Well, I have some, I guess, but I need to keep up with the rest of the culture game. Starting to keep up with the science game, I have a plan that's more immediately possible. Okay, so I'm going to get a second vampire. This is really crucial.
Okay. <clears throat> So I'm still not sure necessarily what I want to do with these bottom three cities here, like Skedsmo and Skin and all of them. I'm thinking some sort of internal thing here. Oh man, more war decks. Okay, no, not another war deck. Why did it make that sound? It made the war declaration sound. <laughs> I thought that my friend was betraying me. Uh, that would be sad. Not a refro. Oh, I could have attacked it actually. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Huge. Ooh. We got the wonder. Production increases everywhere. Upgrade. Probably should have gone for a crossbow. Because now I can't really, I can't, it's not like I can build these industrial zones. Um. But I do need to get some men at arms going. <clears throat> so I'll keep pumping those. That's fine. I, I did it for the tech boost. It was on purpose. Okay, um, well, I want to upgrade these guys to Immortals as they get to the front lines, but I also really want to make, or sorry, to Man-at-Arms. I also really want to make sure that my Man-at-Arms actually have, um, level 4 upgrade. I don't want to be upgrading Man-at-Arms for no reason.
Okay. So we're continuing to move everything northwards. I'm seeing a couple of units start to trickle in. And our walls finish up. Got some upgrades. I think it's going to be okay. I don't think the second scout is going to make it out. It is not looking good for scout number two. Maybe if I go to the right. If I go left, he's dead for sure. Kind of got to go back. We're going to harvest that, put an industrial zone there. <coughs> Not sure what to do with this builder. I guess I'm just going to keep on prepping for the future. Maybe chop out this guy. I'll get it all done over time. Just use those chops to work in the direction that you want to go. <coughs> I'm never too afraid to chop. It uh, turns out that losing a little bit of production Per turn on a tile is not usually that big of a deal when it comes to what you're replacing it with a lot of the time. Also giving you a pre pretty big bonus, it, uh, it, it evens out. In fact, it's usually a net bonus by a lot. It's not, it's not a good idea. It's a really pretty song. Getting a little tired. Feeling kind of sleepy. I may turn in here soon. You can tell it's getting pretty late where I am. Although I did sleep in kind of late today, so 
Well, no, I have crazy sleep cycles. I mean, I get these bouts of insomnia, so... You never know, I might wake up in two hours for no reason. Be right back on. <laughs> A settler? Why are they gonna settle? Who? Like, <laughs> what? What's the plan for that? Is... Hmm. Got a ten pop, ten pop city. That's nice. Ten pop cities are good. Hero score, gotta love that. So, here's the thing. <clears throat> I guess maybe this is what I'll wrap up with tonight. Is when you are being invaded by a superior military force, there is a lot to think about when it comes to how exactly you position your units. So I want to point out a couple things. The range of a city center is two. One, two hexes. So these guys, this guy right here, can't be hit by that city center. If he goes here, he can, because two tiles away. One, two. So for me to try to take these tiles here around this city doesn't really make much sense, strategically speaking. What I would want to do is set up a border right outside of that two tile range but here's the thing there are no walls so this two tile range that would normally exist doesn't um and it's about to for him um meaning he's probably gonna have a fairly bad time over here uh, it's it's not looking too great um, he's going to want off this wild ride, I think, fairly quickly. So this guy is going to be a pain, though, because there's a bunch of farms over there. He's going to try to pillage them. So I'm going to send these guys over there to kill him for that. And set these guys up right on the edge. Like, we could run in here. You know, smack this encampment, that would be good. It would do a lot of damage, there's no walls. Right? We can do the same thing to Toronto, but why? There's this, here they've got a great general, they've got military advisory, they've got oligarchy, they've got support bonuses. You can't fight into that. You just have to, you just have to fortify. You gotta fortify and wait. So I'm just going to keep migrating north. I'm going to get these level 4 guys upgraded. These are the ones that need to be man-at-arms. In a big way. Just going to float everyone on up yonder. Thank you. 
Did I get ship building? Yep. Alright, well, I'm tired. That's where I'm gonna call it for today. My brain is fried. It's been good. We got in Oh well not too many turns. Oof. We had to do a lot of thinking. I had to do a lot of thinking. I had to take a pause there. Got war declared on us. But we're gonna win this war. He's gonna attack us. It's not gonna work. Then he's gonna die. Well, no, he's not gonna die. He's gonna regret it. Because we're gonna do infrastructure while he's making units, and we're just gonna make our units into a massive meat grinder. That's the plan. So, more on that next time. We'll pick this up where we left off. But for now, I am going to go put my head on a soft thing and hallucinate vividly for several hours and then forget all of it. <laughs>